like laying down there. appears much more formidable than your uncle. Should I be worried? Ah, uh, you haven't been introduced. Jill, Clive has told me much about you. All lies, I'm sure. Your Stolas said that Dalamil has a bandit problem. Indeed. Although, you're a little late. They left with our food and gill days ago. Any idea where they went? The desert's a big place. Your guess is as good as mine. But the fact is, I have more immediate concerns. What did you say to me? What did you say? Ah, as if by magic. Let's just say we've yet to reach a consensus about how to solve Dalimil's little problem. And at this rate, it won't be the actions of the bandits which prove to be our undoing. It will be our own. I've tried reasoning with the dissenting parties, but even the desert hair has limits. Perhaps we could talk to them. What makes you think they'll listen to us? What makes you think they won't? Hmm. She makes a fair point, Sid. And you won't have wasted much of your precious time if you fail. They're just across the courtyard. Suppose we just follow the shouting. You wouldn't talk like that if it had been your men whose throats were slit. Blood for blood, it's the only way. We hire mercenaries and have them mount the bandits' heads on our walls as a lesson to the rest. And what happens when those mercenaries are slaughtered like your men? Are you going to hire more? We're better off using that coin to buy food and supplies. If we hire mercenaries, the only thing we're buying is the bandits' ire. And you cannot fill empty bellies with that. Do you hear me? But what happens when they come back? Maybe it'll be your throat that's slit. That's enough. Both of you. Any more of this and I'll throw you out myself. Come back when you're ready to talk like adults. Victor. What's he doing here? Sid. And Lady Jill. What brings you here? I was about to ask you the same thing. Costness is in chaos. And the markets have all but ceased to operate. The Briar's Kiss here in Dalamil is the only place I can reliably obtain supplies. I was here to do just that when Master Lubor told me of his troubles. He thought I might be able to talk some sense into these fools. But if you're here, I suppose his patience must be waning. Who are those people? Those were the thorns in Lubor's side. And the reason this place might be headed the same way as Costness. These are cursed skies. The darkness is enough to drive a man to madness. Or an entire city, for that matter. We're still working on the skies. But in the meantime, perhaps we can find a solution to Dalamil's problems. I hope so. For all our sakes.
Haven't we had enough <coughs> People take notice of wealthy men. Shouldn't be too hard to track down Karen's collector. My reputation will be ruined! Ruined! Calm yourself, Lord Ignac, I beg of you, before you do yourself a mischief. Pardon the intrusion, but... Out! Get out! I paid for these rooms so I wouldn't be disturbed. Leave me be! Please, allow me to apologize. His lordship is going through a difficult time, and he's never been fond of guests arriving unannounced. Radim! Get rid of the filthy oath this instant! Very good, Lord Ignac. Would you mind stepping outside for a moment? I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. That? No, no, no. That's just how his lordship is. Though the morning's events have left him somewhat... fractious. He has been dispossessed of his luggage, you see. The thieves also made away with a considerable amount of coin. Coin the innkeeper will soon be keen to collect. I don't suppose a certain blade was among the stolen items. A single-edged sword. It was purchased from a merchant friend of mine. Ah, you know Lady Karen. Yes, I'm afraid it was. Then I'll retrieve Lord Ignac's luggage. But I have one condition. You have but to state it. You are welcome to anything that is within my power to grant. I want an audience with Lord Ignac. A few minutes should be enough. Then I'll be on my way. A condition I would be a fool to refuse. Of course, you shall have your audience. I don't suppose you saw where the thieves went? I did not, no. Though some discreet inquiries made on his lordship's behalf mean that I know where you might find them. The bandit's bed. Every ill-gotten coin in Dalamal is said to pass through that disreputable corner of the Valcroy. Then that's where I'm heading. I shall speak to Lord Ignac in your absence, and arrange for an audience upon your triumphant return. That will be very kind of you. Farewell, and best of luck. So, you see my predicament? What I saw was a room full of people who were angry and afraid. And with good reason by the sound of it. But if left to smolder, that anger and fear could set the entire town alight. My thoughts exactly. Ugh, what to do? Both sides wish to protect their homes and livelihoods, if only they could agree on how. But as long as they are divided, we are vulnerable. And if there's one thing bandits like, it's an easy target. What would Sid the <coughs> Outlaw suggest? <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> if it were my name, sir. He'd let them choose for themselves and be on hand to pick up the pieces when it all went wrong. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. A recipe for disaster is precisely what it is. But 
Perhaps that realization would be enough to make them question the ingredients. While it's plain neither Conrad nor Natalie will countenance the other's proposal, it may still be possible to make them doubt their own. Before presenting them with a third option. And that would be? To pool our resources and save the city ourselves. Why fight each other? When all that fear and anger can be directed at the bandits. It appears we have a plan of action. Victor, pay Conrad a visit. See if you can't convince him of his folly. I'll speak with Natalie. As you wish. Hmm. Your faces are not well known in this town. That may prove useful. Don't worry, Victor and I will do most of the talking. You need only play along. Play along? What he means to say is yes. she is the lady of the spear herself conrad may i introduce you to jane commander of the red wings the oldest mercenary guild in the free cities a pleasure my lady the pleasure is all mine as i told you i summoned the commander here from canberra to inquire about a contract victor says you told him no that there aren't any men left to hire. Is that true? True as the crystals cracked. Nobles came and claimed every last one worth his salt. And not just from us Red Wings. You know of the seven high houses. There must be two score swords assigned each one. Granted, we have a few boys left. <laughs> if it's boys you're looking for. Well, Conrad, are you saying that Dalamul's finest cannot defend this town better than a gaggle of unblooded striplings? That a band of beardless youths could better avenge the deaths of your brave men than you yourselves? Absolutely not. We'll show those bastards who they're dealing with. I can't believe that actually worked. Conrad's not what you call the brightest candle in the crypt. And there's a reason why I had you do the talking and not Sid. Well played, my lady. I would I mean it may still be possible to buy something ah here he is now Natalie allow me to introduce Lord Underhill of Randalar's prestigious League of Merchants uh, Lord Underhill at your service Underhill I was just telling the good lady of our conversation my lord and how you were lamenting the state of the capital's stores. Lubor says that not only are the granaries almost empty, but that war and the blight mean this season's harvest won't be enough to fill them for winter. Indeed, certainly that is the case. The nobles in the capital are buying the city's stocks of barley and wine, driving the prices higher than most commoners can afford. It is only a matter of time before the peasants revolt. 
It is worse than I thought. If what Lord Underhill says is true, I fear we have little hope of supplementing our stores, meager though they regrettably are. And while I applaud your endeavors to dissuade our more bellicose citizens from seeking vengeance, I sense Conrad is not wrong in his assessment of the bandit's likely return. Which means that now, more than ever, we will need to secure what little we still have. Food, weapons, herbs, everything. If our humble town is to endure not only this hardship, but those that are certain to follow, we must stand united. All right. If it will help to protect my home, I'll do it. But you needn't have gone through this charade. Thank you, Clive. Your performance was nothing if not workmanlike. She saw right through it. I didn't say it was good. Merely that it produced the desired effect. Now, my scouts should be returning shortly. Meet me back at the Briar's Kiss, and we shall see what we face. I'm not convinced our roles in this ruse were entirely necessary. <laughs> I don't know. Conrad seemed quite taken with you. It appears I have no choice but to do what little I can to defend what little we have. Mummy, I'm scared. Oh, I'm ruined. It's good news, Sid. Both Conrad and Natalie have somewhat gracefully accepted their new roles. With time, they may even learn to. Time no longer appears to be the luxury it was before lunch. I take it your scouts found the bandits. Technically, it would be the bandits who found my scouts. It appears they march for Dalamil as we speak. All of them. You're not serious. They don't just want food, they want the whole damn town. I have a favor to ask. I'm told the bandits march in two groups, one from the south and one from the desert, in a move doubtless intended to stretch our already gossamer-thin defenses. Very well. Jill and I will meet those from the desert. But what of the rest? The rest, my friend, the city shall fight. Together. Mistakes, I concede, are high. <laughs> but if this does not unite Dalamil, nothing will. That is a lot of faith to put into those who had their hands around each other's throats but a moment ago. Then it will be for us to see that their hands are kept occupied. And I do mean us. I thought you might say that. We'll hold them off for as long as we can. And we will do the same.
The townspeople. Could they have held out? I don't hear any fighting. What do you think? That we should hurry. Natalie, I owe you an apology. You did well out there. The inn would have been lost had you not held the line. Without you, there would have been no line to hold. You saved us, comrade. You saved Alamil. We all saved Alamil. Conrad seems to have had a change of heart. I'd say they both have. I take it from your presence that our visitors from the desert won't be joining us either. Pity. The plan worked, Sid. Granted, it only took an army of bloodthirsty bandits at our gate. Come now, Victor. Why quibble over the details? We are united, and that is all that matters. As for you, Sid, you fight considerably better than you act. I'll take that as a compliment.
got company. Come on, lads, let's tear the bastard's head off. This must be Ignac's luggage. Nothing seems to be damaged. All right. Let's get it back to Delamel. I hear I have you to thank for the return of my effects. What shall I call you, my good man? Wyvern. Glad to make your acquaintance. A formidable name indeed. Well, Wyvern, I appear to be in your debt. Redeem here tells me you wished for an audience. Is that all? A few moments of your time should suffice, yes. You're a peculiar fellow, Wyvern. All right, speak. Master Wyvern was wondering if you could tell him about a certain single-edged sword you recently acquired. Oh, a true work of art, that one. Karen drove me hard on the price, but I would have sold her Radim here to get my hands on that sword. It was made in the Outer Isles, far beyond the Twins, and is used exclusively by the practitioners of a unique school of swordsmanship. They believe no combat should ever exceed a single strike and hone their blades to such perfection that none ever does. Each sword is made for that one perfect stroke and for that stroke only. They crack upon a second blow. There's a brutal sort of beauty to it, really. But how do they hone such an edge? <laughs> Fine question. Why, they use a whetstone, of course. Whetstones, rather. A whole array of them, ranging from the coarse to the fine. Ten thousand licks with the sharpening stone, then ten thousand more. But it is the final stone which lends the blade its legendary sharpness. A mineral quite foreign to this great realm of ours. And that is the key. The secret ingredient. Why, when it occurs to me that my little lecture is hardly equal to services rendered, take this, together with my regards, the very stone of which I spoke, far rarer among collectors than even the blade itself, and a far more fitting payment. Thank you. Pardon the intrusion, my lordship. However, it is long past time we prepared ourselves to depart. So it is. I am locked in bitter competition with a rival collector of curiosities. I am one step ahead of the unscrupulous scoundrel, but he is hard at my heels. 
And there are many other collectors out there. Too many to count, but only one do I consider my nemesis, Lord Byron Rosfield, and is a perennial thorn in my side. <laughs> I can imagine. Farewell, Wyvern. May our paths cross again. Radim, we mustn't dawdle. I think his lordship is rather taken with you, Master Wyvern. Thank you again for your assistance. Coming, my lordship. I'll be right there. Trust Uncle Byron to find such an interesting rival. Now, let's see what Blackthorn makes of this whetstone, shall we? Sorry for the wait, but hopefully you'll agree it was worth it. You learned something about our sword then? I did better than that. I... a whetstone? Yes. But not one you'll find anywhere in Valisthea. so bad if all you ever fought were duels. <laughs> good luck on the battlefield. Your second opponent would be your last, no matter how good you were. Even so, is there some way it could be used to give the Curse Breakers an edge? I think so, yeah. With this whetstone and the right kind of steel, I could probably even make a twin of the blade that rattles. <laughs> but there'd be no replacing this little rock once I worn it down to a sliver. I reckon we get a dozen swords from it, if that. Swords that the curse breakers wouldn't know how to wield properly, and that would see him through a single fire piece. Nah, no point trying to copy that thing. Be about as much use as a wax anvil. But finishing our blades with a whetstone is fine. Now that's something to consider. And what's finer than fallen masonry, eh? Or more hard wearing for that matter? Just imagine it. Good Valisthean steel with an edge as sharp as any found in the Outer Isles. I won't make a copy now. I'll make something much better. I'm sure the Curse Breakers will be delighted. Just... don't push yourself too hard. <laughs> don't you worry about me, Sunshine. I'll be working day and night since I was half your age. And I'll still be here when you're long gone. Hey. Thanks, Clive. I mean it. I owe you one. August 2. It's good to know someone's looking out for me. You'll be happy to hear you said that. And I'll see that my debt to you's paid. First new blade I make's got your name on it. You come and find me when you've got the materials. All right.
anything else?
Your reign is over. Now to collect the ash. I should... This looks like the stuff. Let's see if there's any more. That should do it. This fuss over a few dark clouds. All right there, Sid. How's that hunt for the bomb ash going? I have it here. That's the stuff. And plenty of it, too. Enough to keep the Olympic bubbling away for a good old while. You're a gent, Sid. Let nothing say otherwise. Right then. Let's get this contraption up and running. There we have it. The Telemon Malembic. And it works just like the Chief said it would. Very impressive. <laughs> Says the man who cut down a burning boulder. There's no need. Don't be silly. Why do you let me... What? 
Well, thought we might. Ah, well. That's this. Well, what do you reckon? It certainly feels right. Thank you. No, no, for support. Still alive, are ya? Go on, then. You're rubbing me blind, you know. You'll not find a better price than that. It is better I'll be here. You'll not find a better price than that. You're rubbing me blind, you know. You'll not find a better price than that. Finished, are you? First we find Isabel.
Heard a bloke saying he saw ghosts on the far side of the wall.